Hi book friends, I'm Erin and this is Erin Go Read. Welcome or welcome back. This is another reading vlog, life vlog, and I thought I'd start with just telling you what I'm reading and also have a little bit of a book haul from shopping yesterday. So recent purchase from the used bookstore, The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. I'd previously read The Wonder by her and loved it. And I'm about halfway, yeah, right about halfway through with this. I even put the dust jacket on for you so you can see the cover. Don't read with the dust jacket on, but I had it to hand. So this is, this takes place during the Spanish flu in um, 19, I think we're in 1918 in Ireland. And we're following uh, Nurse, what's her name? Nurse Julia, Nurse, Power, Julia Power, who is a nurse in a, it's basically a ward for pregnant women who are suffering very badly with the flu. And the first, like almost whole half, whole half, first half of the book was really chronicling one day where she was the only nurse um, in her ward and she kind of had to be in charge and it's just it was kind of like a day in the life of this ward and what amazes me and looking back I think this is the same with the wonder is that without her being very descriptive of the actual surroundings I just feel like I have a complete picture in my head of what this ward looked like and I'm like seeing it almost very cinematically even though I, I don't recall a whole lot of deal, uh, time spent actually describing these things, but I, I have a very clear picture in my mind too of the wonder and uh, like the bedroom that the, it was mostly um, set in. So I'm really enjoying The Pull of the Stars. And then I'm almost done with North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Now I'm actually listening to this on audiobook and I will probably, I need to do, I'm training for this uh, Ragnar relay, um, which is like a point to point relay run where each, there's six people on the team and we each run, in, in the case of our race, we're each running two different sections. And so mine is basically 17 miles uphill um, in two, over two sections. So I'll have like several hours break in between those times and so, just life got in the way and rather than doing my run outdoor today, I'm gonna have to do it on the treadmill. And so I think I'll probably finish listening to it today. I had, I was listening to it yesterday and I realized I was like running errands or whatever. And I just realized like what, I have not paid attention very well. I listened to it during, during my workout and then driving around and there was a certain event that happened and I hardly recalled anything that had happened after this particular event and so I had to go back in time. I was almost done with the book. I'm still almost done. I think I have like two hours left. So um, I may, depending on what's going on, I may actually try and read some of this physically, uh, but we'll see. But I love this copy. It's a vintage Red Spine and I just love, love that copy. Oh, I didn't even notice before. It's kind of like, you have like the flowers and the gate of kind of like the rural South where they're from and then um, the bricks, more the industry of the North where you where they moved to. But what this is about is, um, what is her name? Margaret. Margaret is our main character and her dad was a Church of England parson. Is that the word? And he basically decides that he doesn't agree. Um, he, he can't, his conscience can't continue on in the Church of England and, um, and being a pastor or parson or whatever they call it. And so he leaves the church and he, uh, they move to this industrial northern town of Milton and it's a, it's a mill town. And there's essentially a kind of enemy, enemies to lovers situation happening between Mr. Thornton who um, runs, owns and runs the mill, the main kind of um, employer of the town and Margaret and the they're they're acquainted because her father Mr. Hale is tutoring Mr. Thornton and so that's why they have like um why they're even interacting to begin with um there's also kind of like a family secret that's going on that's kind of in the background of a lot of things that happen and some of the um the conflict that happens based around her brother and then you get this there's there's kind of the um 
you have the north and the south and the different kind of values of the, the, the northern people and the southern people and then class too. Both re relating to the north and the south, but also just those kind of the haves and the have-nots. So I'd seen the BBC miniseries of this in October, maybe three years ago or so. So I had an idea of the story. Um, there's a lot of it that I forgot. I get that. Oh, Could you try I, again? I'm, I'm not talking to you, Siri. Go away. Okay. Rude. Where was I? Um, yeah, so I don't remember how closely it, the BBC series follows the book. That I'm in a section right now that, like, I don't necessarily remember what happens and I don't remember, you know, it's, it's going to be a happily ever after but I don't remember how we get to that point. So anyhow, that's what I'm reading currently. And then I picked up, I was in the in the neighborhood of Half Price Books yesterday. And so I had to stop by and pick some stuff up. So I have a Graham Greene, which is Travels with My Aunt, which um, I have another Graham Greene in these same editions. They're like a, a special, a Penguin special edition. Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. And they have the... Um, French flaps. Um, and so I thought it's silly because I own this other Graham Greene. Have I read it yet? No, but I feel like he's an author that I will really like. And then this one sounded, it's just like comical. And this younger guy goes um, like traveling with, traveling with his aunt as the, as the title says. And I just loved this cover as well. So I picked that up and then I just got this. I just could not resist this cover of Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. I have, I think, a Penguin Red Spine of this. I've not read it yet, but this copy was like $2 and the picture goes all the way around and it was just too good not to pick up. And so I got that. So if I don't read it before Victober, I will definitely read that book for Victober this year. What else did I get? Oh, I got Amistad, uh, Amistad Maupin, Tales of the City. And um, oh, I didn't realize this is going to be going to be or is a Netflix series, but <clears throat> I had heard someone recently talking about these and um, I think it's a mystery series that takes place in San Francisco, which I'm about 100 miles inland of the city. So been interested in those. And then I got In the Woods by Tana French, the first in the, I think it's the Dublin Murder Club. Book. So I've been interested in this in for several years and have never gotten around to it. And I've just been very much into kind of genre reading and mysteries, uh, thrillers recently. So picked that guy up. And then finally, more mysteries. This is like such a cool, this is a PJ Woodhouse omnibus, um, the Jeeves omnibus. So they were, they had three volumes, um, omnibus volumes. And um, so this one has the first one, two, three. Um, Thank you, Jeeves, the Code of the Worcesters and the Inimitable Jeeves. And my friend Marina had just been talking about P.G. Woodhouse and um, couldn't believe I hadn't read it um, yet. And uh, so I picked this up and these just editions were so cool. Um, really big, but like feels like good in the hands and the decently nicely sized print and um, kind of generous margins in there. So that is what I just picked up. I don't know what I want to do right now. <laughs> I have this, I need to do this run slash uphill walking training and it's going to be hanging over my head until I do it. But I'm not ready to do it yet. So I think what I'll do is read some pull of the stars first to kind of just do something that I want to do before I have to do something that I have to do. Um, much of my morning has been spent helping my mom. Um, she, she, she is taking my niece and nephew, they're nine and 12, to Santa Cruz for the next few days. And so um, my mom gets very, really like uh, discombobulated when it comes to organizational things and like travel and stuff like that. And so, you know, once they're on the road, like she knows where they're going, she's got her phone, like she's fine, but just like making sure that everything was where it needed to be, um, that everything got packed and all that kind of stuff. So I helped load up the car and like get the food sorted and all that kind of stuff and um, help them get on their way 
this morning. And so that's kind of what I've been doing. And um, now I'm just home alone. And what do I do? So I guess I'll read for a while before I hop on the treadmill. So every now and then the word pandemic is used. And it, because I'm so into the story and in, in, in the, just the present moment of what's happening on, on the ward and with um, and with nurse power, I really, there's no sense of like, this feels too real, this feels too close to home as far as a pandemic goes, because it's just so vastly different from the pandemic that we're going through right now. I only have like 50 pages left, still enjoying it. And I have no idea where this story is actually going because it's just kind of like a few days in the life of Nurse Power. Um, there's also Bridie, a 22 year old uh, poor girl who has kind of grown up in the system. And she basically lives at a house, at a halfway house, uh, or it's a, a convent. She knows very little of life, very naive. She just has, hasn't has had much or been been exposed to much because of uh, just being raised in, a, in an orphanage and, and, and in a convent. Um, but yeah, I'm, as much as I'm enjoying it, I just literally have no clue where the story is actually going. So yeah, um, I have, did I say, about 50 pages left. So I'll let you know my thoughts when I finish. finished the pull of the stars that last like 160 pages just flew by absolutely loved it I had no idea where it was going I was just along for the ride it was just really the day-to-day -day life um only two two days in the life of this nurse um in this in this hospital and then Bridie Sweeney the um the, the just the layman helper that was sent um that was sent by the convent to help her out. Just, yeah, super pleased I read that and I'm here for Emma Donahue. Um, so I've read The Wonder and The Pull of the Stars now. Have you read any Emma Donahue? What is your, what is your favorite? I needed to go to, or I still need to go to the pharmacy, and it's right down the street from the used bookstore. So I thought, well, let me just sneak over here since I have some time, I'm kind of in the middle of the day today. It's Monday, by the way. It's going on 1130. So I picked up a few books. I got two for Garb August, um, Readathon. Uh, Gina Stanier, uh, Gina Stanier, and um, I don't know, I don't remember who else. Um, yeah, I don't remember who else is doing it, but the, um, the idea is read like trash. And then there's a whole conversation about like, what is trash? What do you consider, you know, highbrow, lowbrow, whatever. So I thought it'd be a good time to maybe pick up some Nora Roberts slash JD Robb. So this, this is the first in death book, Naked in Death by JD Robb. And so from what I understand, this is like the more of the mystery side of her writing. Although I'm really not sure because as I was just looking at the gazillion different Nora Roberts books. It seems like under Nora Roberts, there was both some like mystery stuff and some romance. Cause actually the next one, the obsession, this seems like more of like a thriller, mystery thriller. Um, so yeah, I don't understand the, uh, the difference between J.D. Robb and Nora Roberts. If you know the distinction between the two, let me know um, if you have any favorite favorites, um, either standalones or series or anything like that, um, from, uh, Queen Roberts, let me know. Um, I also found, now if I was really into this, it would have been a really great steal, um, but they had the first, like, I think the entire Expanse series, so this is the first one, Leviathan Wakes, by, um, James S.A. Corey, and, um, so this is the first in the Expanse series, which is a, 
um, I don't know if you call it, a, I, I guess it's like a space opera or like a space war opera. I read the first maybe 10 pages of this in December um, because I got, it, I got this for my brother-in-law for Christmas. So I thought it'd be something that he'd be into. So I thought, hey, for like four bucks, um, you know, that would be a good one to try out. I also picked up Autumn by Ali Smith. I have read Winter. I have not read Autumn. And so, you know, found this for a few bucks. Then I got a couple just really nice um, editions. Ooh, that's gonna fall over. Nice editions of classics. So I got this Oxford World Classics edition of Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. So I would love to read this. And this does not look like it's ever even been uh, been read or opened. And so for, you know, a few bucks, I will add this to my Oxford Library editions. And then I found this beautiful Everyman's Library edition of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And now one thing I don't understand with Everyman's Library editions, there's there are different versions of the Everyman's Library. There are the ones that, this one is like the um, like fabric one. There are the ones that are more red than, this is more of like a burgundy, but it has the dust jacket. Then there are the black ones, the dust jacket, and then there's the black ones that have like a print on it. Like I don't understand, could they all just be the same and then they look so nice on the shelf together. But this is a really beautiful edition. It has the um, ribbon bookmark in it and Kim at Middle of the book Bookmarch is running a read-along of Wuthering Heights this week because I believe July 30th was Emily Bronte's birthday or it will be is was <laughs> Emily Bronte's birthday um, and so I think I might actually listen I just finished North and South by the way so I think I'll listen to Wuthering Heights next so North and South I have to say so this is the second Gaskell I've read Wives and Daughters is my favorite between the two. Maybe because it was my first, but I think I just enjoyed, just enjoyed the story more. There's no, there's more like warmth um, and kind of happy times, I think in Wives and Daughters than there is in North and South. But um, I really did enjoy all of the juxtapositions in North and South um, between the North and the South and the, the working class and the middle class and kind of like new money, old money, um, all these kind of juxtaposed uh, positions of uh, society. Um, and then also, I don't, I don't like, I don't prefer a mic drop love story ending. And that's kind of, that's kind of what we get in North and South. It's just a real mic drop ending, which is, satisfactory and then you kind of get the ending that you want but um in when I think about like the the hero's journey the, the structure of a story you always start off in kind of the mundane life where um you know the inciting incident hasn't happened yet and I think of that as time in the shire and sometimes I want I want to go back to the shire and like hang out for a minute before we get the ending rather than just being like we're done so that's all I have to say about North and South. I still love it. I love Gaskell's writing. I just feel so um, tender, I guess, toward the characters and their plight. So yeah, um, I have Cranford and Other Stories, which I think I picked, picked up in a little free library. So I still have that to read and I don't know what else. I don't, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head from Elizabeth Gaskell, but maybe you'll be getting to that in October, in, in October. So I think actually that will do it for this reading vlog because I think, you know, I finished two books and I've had two book hauls. So I think that's probably all we need to be getting on with. Let me know if you have read any of these books or any of the books I talked about earlier in the vlog. Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.